Hello everyone. A few weeks ago, I introduced you to some interesting launches. One made by Microsoft, one that looked like an iPhone, and one that was just downright stupid. And of course, this generated a lot of comments. Some of them suggesting different launches. And that's exactly what we're going to look at today. My name's Rob Wilson, you're watching C4 Retech, and this is three launches suggested by you, the viewers, for your Android device. We'll start with the Lone Wolf and John Matthews suggestion, Smart Launcher 3, or at least the free version of it. The first thing to realise is that once this launcher has finished optimising your device, it's going to look very different. This is because your primary home screen is essentially condensed into what you would normally find on your dock, such as messages, contacts, the camera and so on. So the obvious question is, where are all your other apps? Well, this is the main premise of Smart Launcher. It takes all your applications and intelligently places them into categories which are all located in this app draw button in the bottom left of your home screen. Once you're in the app draw, the categories are sorted down a column on the left hand side of the screen. And at first glance, Smart Launcher does seem to put things where they should go. My guess is that it's filtering the apps by how they are categorised on the Play Store, which is a pretty safe assumption. The default categories include communication, games, tools and so on, but you can add and modify these in the full version. Also, if you're not happy with the app's location, you do have the option to move it to another category by long pressing on it to bring up various options and dragging it to another category. As well as this, the plus button will suggest apps to install, but that's more or less advertising, so take it with a pinch of salt. So back to that rather basic home screen. You can make small adjustments, such as changing the solitary widget at the top, but beyond that you're pretty limited. That is, until you decide to change the main theme of Smart Launcher, and this is where the application does become a little more creative. Through the built-in theme selector you can choose a new theme, but just be aware there is a distinction between free and premium paid ones. When you select one you will be taken to the Play Store for a quick install before switching to your new theme. Smart Launcher is a relatively small app, coming in at 3.5 meg, and promises low resource requirements and battery usage. From a personal point of view, I like the app categorization, but that home screen is a little restrictive, even with different themes. Our next suggestion comes from this chap who suggests Sea Launcher for a multitude of reasons, and this is what it looks like when you first install and launch it. We're back to the traditional widgets and icons appearance, although your first job will be to remove these various advert icons that randomly and frustratingly appear. Like Smart Launcher, C Launcher will attempt to categorise your existing apps into folders, but it does this on a second home screen rather than in the app drawer, and it adds a stylized flavour to each folder with themed backgrounds, although you do have the option to customise these. On the other hand, C Launcher does include some features that I know will make you rage, such as this resource cleaner on the main home screen. And above that is a market button, which is a bit deceptive since it doesn't actually take you to the Google Play Store. It's just clutter that you need to test and get rid of mostly. This next feature, however, is very useful and very well executed. If you pinch out with two fingers on a home screen, you will open the password protected hidden app screen. This is where you can hide your deepest secrets, or Candy Crush to stop your girlfriend or indeed boyfriend stealing your phone all the time. The fact that this is launched from the home screen with a gesture is what I like most, as it means it's well hidden to the layman, but quick to access to those in the know. And just like Smart Launcher, C Launcher comes with themes that you can browse through within the launcher, then get shunted out to Google Play to install before returning to the launcher to apply the theme. As well as changing the theme, this will often change your icon pack as well. So if you suddenly can't find any of your apps, you've only got yourself to blame. And remember, if you don't like any of the launchers featured today, you suggested them. So you've only got yourself to blame. Our final launcher suggestion comes from Kappel, who tells us that the Asus Zen UI launcher is awesome. Well, the first thing to say is that the home screen starts off quite bare with just a couple of Google folder apps. But when you flick through the app drawer and open the folders up for the first time to see the silky smooth transition animations, you quickly realise there's a lot more to this launcher. By far and away, Zen UI's best feature is the home screen long press. That opens up the manage home options where you can customise your home screens and the launcher in general pretty extensively. Just like the previous launchers, Zen UI can organise your apps intelligently into folders, 
but it doesn't do this on launch. It gives you the option to do it, and this gives you full and complete control. The next feature of note is the single finger swipe down that launches a mini Google Now type screen showing you recent apps and trending news stories. Obviously it's not for everyone but it doesn't take up a home screen either, so you can take it or leave it. An app privacy feature is included too, again access through the managed home screen and there's also theme support and in this particular case Zen UI downloads and applies the theme within the launcher so you don't have to go in and out of the Google Play Store. Of the three launchers suggested by you, the viewers today, thanks to its silky, buttery smoothness and excellent user interface, Zen UI gets my vote as the best of the trio. But what do you think? Comments welcome, as always. Better yet, suggest an app and it may feature in a future video. And to finish off, we have a quick bonus, which is all to do with finding the apps you want more quickly and efficiently. I say apps because if you are a non-gamer like me, wading through the app store can be a bit of a pain, especially when all the top charts are dominated by games. Well now, there is a very simple application, simply called Apps, that solves this. It launches the Play Store with a different URL that only displays applications, not games. It is limited to the top charts list, such as paid, free and top grossing, but for checking out the most popular apps rather than games, this is a neat little tool to keep on your device. Thanks very much for watching this video today. If you enjoyed it, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, then don't forget to subscribe to C4E Tech. Our social media channels are on screen now, which leads me to just say one final thing. Enjoy the rest of your tech day.